Welcome back to the channel. Today, we will be reviewing real life test of the highway driving assist to uh, lane keeping assist and lane following assist and all the features that come with uh, the 23 Hyundai Palisade. Uh, this is the calligraphy uh, trim, the one that we're, you're seeing now. This is Nashville around 5 to 6 p.m. in the afternoon. There wants to be some kind of heavy traffic and I thought it would be a great time to give it a test, get some clips and show you my experience and my thoughts on it. So, so far I've had, I've had I mean, for this kind of traffic, uh, I think it, it's fine. When you're just going straight, there's not really that many people cutting you off. And if they are, then it's usually much smoother than what I had in my other Mazda CX-5 Signature Edition. Uh, this is much smoother than that. And you can see that I'm having to you know, intervene very little. However, I'm 100% focused on like what's going on and not just trusting my my whole life on this. <laughs> How we're driving Season 2 from Hyundai. Um, but I'm always kind of relaxed, but ready to hit the brakes or steer if needed especially when you know the curves come along or there's a intersection or some kind of a fork that may be coming along i tend to pay more attention to those but you can see now um it does remind you to put the hands on the wheel every so often just to make sure that you're still paying attention so that's very fine. So all you got to do is just give it a little squeeze to the steering wheel or just a little tap, wiggle it just to let the car know that you're there. So here uh, we're coming to a fork where the high wheel will divide. So I'm getting a little bit concerned now here with the car because I know this this, this road, I know it's going to curve and it's a bit of a tricky um, the way that it is. And now with the highway driving assist, it, I'm, you know, I, I don't trust it enough to go by itself. So it gets a little bit sketchy here on this turn. And I'm like right there with my hand and, and foot in the brake or ready to kind of take over if needed. And this part is where I was kind of, it gets out of control. Just take a look at it. It does slow down pretty good. But then it kind of goes off a little bit off the lane and I just grab it because I know it. I mean, I, I was not feeling comfortable um, letting it go by its own. So I kind of took over and steer back into the lane and then kind of you, you will see the green light in between the, the, the screen letting you know that it's activated and whatnot. Um, the, the lane following is activated. So after that little um, junction there, it just kind of goes, goes straight and it, you know, the car speeds up fairly not too fast or too slow, it just slowly, gradually speeding, speeding up. And I kind of go back to relaxing and getting a massage at this point. And I think now this is where my wife, they're also taking videos. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of where um, I'm testing out the lane switching. I put the right signal, in the, but every time you want to switch lanes, the car wants you to touch the, the steering wheel just to make sure that you are in control. So put the put the switch in light, put the 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 right light on to make the switch give it a little squeeze on the <laughs> steering wheel and then it will whenever the car knows that it's safe to make the switch it will do it for you and right now i'm about to uh, switch lanes again and then it will ask me to touch the steering wheel which i do and then after the confirmation, I guess he asked me again. Uh, and then kind of 
makes makes the the right switch. Now, after you put your turning light on, I think it gives you like five seconds or so to make sure that there's no one around, and whenever all those uh, things check off, it will make the switch. So now the traffic's clearing up right now on this part of the, the highway. Um, it's keeping right on the center of the lane. It does fine when it goes straight on, or when it does minor curves, but when it gets like those high speeds and kind of sharp turns and curves, I tend to kind of just take control of it, especially if I have a car next to me. Um, although it does keep in your lane, but it kind of gets too close to the other lane, which if I was driving, I wouldn't do that. So, um, in those cases, I'll, I'll, I'll take over. So here we're coming to another, another traffic jam and it slows down fairly, fairly okay. Now, I, if I'm coming at a high speed and there's a traffic jam, honestly, I do not want to test if it works or not, <laughs> especially if I have my wife and kids in the car. So that that will be a test for another day or I will let somebody else test that how, that, how that goes. But once I come to a comfortable speed, I will resume the 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 highway driving assist or autopilot. I don't know how we're going to call this because this is like semi-autopilot. <laughs> and once we get into like this kind of speeds, I think this is where I feel the most comfortable at using the automated driving features. Um, because like there's nothing really much, like no crazy speeds happening. The car handles very well braking, following the car, if someone gets in front of you at these speeds, it won't be that that dangerous. But this is where I found myself relaxing, if you want to say that. And on the cluster, it kind of shows you the cars that you're driving by, how close they are. If they make a lane switch, you will see that on the screen. So kind of add, giving you more more confidence into you know into the car knowing that the car can see somewhat what you're seeing in person. Uh, however, the car is not going to see three, four, five cars ahead of you. So, you know, this is great and whatnot, but it's, like I said, it should not be a replacement to, <laughs> you shouldn't get too comfortable. But it's great to have it, you know, for these situations. So, like, this truck to the left of me had, like, an RV, uh, like, a camper or whatnot, so the cluster recognized that, but the, it did not display the whole RV or or the 18 wheelers will not show up like a that little figure on the screen, but it will recognize that there's something there and it won't make any crazy decisions. Here we see a Tesla. We got a... <laughs> You know, Tesla doesn't know what's coming. Hyundai's taking over autopilot. <laughs> uh, it's not the only car in the road now that is autopilot. How about that? For a fra fraction of the cost. So this part of the of the trip was very, very heavy traffic. And once again, felt very comfortable like i did not have to intervene much at all during this couple miles here i just let the car do its thing and then the car didn't like ask me to to touch the steering wheel as much as before when when i was coming a little bit faster i guess the car recognizes that we're driving pretty slow heavy traffic so it's it can handle uh it doesn't need to be micromanaged as much pretty much towing truck is going over there something must have happened for sure 
an accident or someone who broke down. All right, so now we are getting close to wrapping this trip up. And on the three lanes on the left side, um, was a little bit more clear, but you can see this, if you can see in the rear mirror right now, this person gets really close to me. Um, the car, uh, the Hyundai did, did somewhat of a hard break right now. So it must have kind of thrown off the person behind me. Um, and then you, I mean, there's, there's the, the cops and tow trucks. So I definitely want to drive more carefully now. So I'm just ready to take over if you need it. <laughs> Don't want to do anything foolish in front of the cops. Keep everyone safe. So now I have to get on the right lane, and I do put the light on, but I, I make the switch just because I don't want to miss it. Just to be waiting on, <laughs> on the lane to kind of decide for itself. So now that the traffic has cleared up, um, the car will just speed up to the. Uh, see, I just did a. The car just kind of switched there by itself, and then I'm just speeding up the. The the settings right there of the cruise control, and the car is speeding up to like 70 miles per hour. And yeah, I mean the, but most of the see right there, it's telling me to put the put my hands on the steering wheel, and I just give it a quick squeeze just to make sure. It doesn't deactivate or or nothing like that. So the more I drive uh, this car using the driving assistant features, I guess you will start to recognize the patterns, the scenarios where are a bit more tricky and require more attention than others. And you will build that confidence in, in the system, in the car, and know when to use it, when not to use it, and just learn the behavior, right? Um, I guess if you do that and you know when to use it, these features will be very helpful. It will make the driving less stressful and more comfortable yeah i mean it's, it's got his con i mean it's pros for sure but i think it's there's a balance right you shouldn't just completely depend on it or or not use it at all you know because if you, if you don't use it at all like you know it's feature you know you're you're cutting yourself short pretty much so here i'm getting off the exit I'm still on the set on the autopilot, I guess you call it. And the reason why I have it on while I'm getting off the exit is because I have a car in front of me. And I know if I have a car in front of me, you can slow down and whatnot, but I'm not sure if this car is going to turn left or right. I will turn right. So if anything, I'll just take over and. Great. So we are coming to a wrap on the video. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing, liking the video, and I'll be making more content like this. The community has been very helpful to me and kind of want to share my experience and kind of what I learned and just kind of learn from each other. All right. Thank you so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.